Only minutes away from the bustle of downtown Honolulu, the Lion Arboretum lies nestled in the green cliffs of Manoa Valley, providing a sanctuary where visitors of all ages may come to experience the beauty of nature. The Arboretum seeks to encourage an appreciation of the unique flora of the Hawaiian Islands and the tropics by curating, conserving, and studying plants in their habitats. Through its various programs, the Arboretum offers diverse learning opportunities while supporting scientific, educational, and service activities for the University of Hawaii. The history of this unique place in Manoa Valley reaches back into the past and the arrival of the first Polynesians. Habitation of Manoa Valley is believed to have taken place at the latest by 1400 AD as a natural extension of the coastal settlements in Waikiki. Hawaiians found the water-rich valley of Manoa to be an ideal place for the growing of taro, a crop essential to the Hawaiian diet that requires fresh, flowing water. The valley once supported a vast network of lo'i, pond fields, for taro cultivation. While the agricultural pursuits of Hawaiians somewhat altered the valley flora, more harmful impacts were made after Western contact. The introduction of animals with hooves forever changed the ecology of all the islands and signaled the destruction of much of the native forests. Once introduced, cattle, goats, and sheep roamed free for decades, eating their way over the landscape. Their sharp hooves crushed young native plants, and cattle also polluted water sources. Pictures of Manoa Valley in the late 19th and early 20th centuries reveal a barren landscape caused by grazing animals. Erosion became a serious problem. Without a healthy forest cover, rainwater flowed into the ocean rather than recharging the ground water table, Hawaii's primary source of potable water. By the early 20th century, the danger to the watershed and the loss of a healthy forest was of special concern to the Hawaiian Sugar Planters Association, the HSPA. Sugarcane crops required great quantities of water, and a growing population also increased water needs. As early as 1909, Dr. Harold Lyon, a young plant pathologist working for the HSPA, warned others about this impending ecological disaster. In 1918, when he was placed in charge of a newly created Department of Botany and Forestation for the Territory of Hawaii, he was finally able to begin a reforestation program. In 1919, the land that is now the Arboretum was acquired by the HSPA. Called the Manoa Arboretum, it would test tree species for reforestation and collect plants of economic value. The reforestation project moved forward under Dr. Lyon. To his credit, Dr. Lyon was very concerned about the conservation of existing native forests. He stated that whatever planting was attempted, the native trees and shrubs still clothing the slopes and gulches should be given special consideration and their preservation should be the main feature of any plan adopted. During the reforestation project, thousands of species of exotic trees and shrubs were introduced to the islands, and thousands of acres of denuded land were reforested. The reforestation program did restore the watershed and save the islands from a permanent drought condition but many of the introduced trees and shrubs became invasive, destroying much of what was left of the native forest. And these invasive species remain a problem today. In 1953, with reforestation over, Dr. Lyon persuaded the HSPA to gift the 124-acre arboretum to the University of Hawaii with the provision that it always be used as an arboretum and botanical garden. When Dr. Lyon died in 1957, it was renamed 
the Harold L. Lyon Arboretum in his honor. Today, the Arboretum remains conscious of its historic and continuing role in water conservation in the islands. Existing on land that is part of Oahu's watershed, it protects this essential resource and offers researchers and students opportunities to study water conservation, stream life, and hydrology, the study of the movement, distribution, and quality of water on our planet. A tremendously important part of the Arboretum's current work is the propagation of rare and endangered Hawaiian plants and aiding in the restoration of native Hawaiian forests. The Arboretum's Hawaiian Rare Plant Program is a leader in the field of plant conservation and is focused on the most critically endangered native plants that have fewer than 50 individuals in the wild. The program has three components, a micropropagation and storage laboratory, a seed conservation laboratory, and greenhouse facilities. In our micropropagation laboratory, we have close to 20,000 seedlings in our lab. It's about maybe 288 different types of species. The Seed Conservation Lab provides long-term storage of seeds and conducts research. So we have about 10 million seeds currently stored in the seed lab. I believe it's somewhere around 550 species uh, and over half of them are endangered species. The greenhouse shelters the living efforts of the program. Here in the greenhouse, you can see some of our most endangered plants making a comeback. And in the Hawaiian Rare Plant Program, we use our combined and targeted efforts to conserve and restore these species and our native ecosystems. Archaeological work conducted at the Arboretum from 2006 to 2009 identified 38 archaeological sites that reflect the traditional uses of this land by native Hawaiians. The findings included pond fields, water storage, and food processing features, fire pits, mounds, platforms, and terraces. The Arboretum continues to protect all of these sites, and restoring some of them is part of the Arboretum's long-term plan. So before the Arboretum was here, these lo'i, or taro patches, were here for hundreds of years. And over the past 20 years, they've been restored by members of the community, uh, mostly by Halau Kumana Hawaiian Charter School and the students there. The abundant rainfall at the Arboretum creates an ideal setting for growing an enormous variety of tropical plants. The Arboretum maintains various theme gardens. These collections reflect the mission of conservation, research, and education, and are also open for visitors to enjoy. The Beatrice Krauss Hawaiian Ethnobotanical Garden showcases plants that were important in traditional Hawaiian culture. Many of these plants continue to be culturally important today and are preserved here to be readily available in the future. This is ulu or breadfruit, a staple food in the traditional Hawaiian diet. The lohala or leaves of the hala tree were used for weaving mats, sails, and other useful items. Palapalai is a fern sacred to Laka. It is used to adorn dancers and as an offering on the hula altar. Within the ethnobotanical garden is a la'au garden, featuring plants that are used for healing purposes. Ava is used for calming, for anxiety, and as a numbing agent. It is also used ceremonially. Ilima flowers are used for women's health and as a mild laxative. Aloe is used on burns, cuts, and scrapes. The children's garden is designed as an active, hands-on garden for young children. Here they are encouraged to explore and observe, 
forging a tangible connection with the natural world around them. Can everyone say mahalo aloy? Visitors to the Spice Garden discover herbs and spices from around the world, including many medicinal and culinary plants. Clove trees are native to the Spice Islands and first came to Hawaii in 1817. The sun-dried flower bud is the part used for cooking. The nutmeg tree gives us two spices, nutmeg and mace. The dark brown nut is the nutmeg and the webbing is the spice mace. The lipstick plant is called alaya by Hawaiians. From South America, it is used to color food as well as cloth, soap, and paint. The Hawaiian section is another expansive garden that features native Hawaiian plants, including many large and mature native trees. So this is the Ohia Lehua, which is a native endemic tree. It would cover the forest of Manoa so completely that when they were in bloom, the mountains would appear red in the old Hawaiian days. So this is a lolu palm, one of many species of Prichardia found here in Hawaii, endemic to Hawaii. And they were also very numerous in the past where they would cover fast tracts of forest. So this is koa, or acacia koa, an endemic Hawaiian tree, again, dominant in the forests of Hawaii and very useful for many reasons. And in the past, most importantly used as uh, material to make canoes. This garden also offers a stunning view of Manoa Valley. What do you think we can do with the begonia? We can eat it. Very good. Education for visitors of all ages is a priority, and the Lion Arboretum offers a variety of learning experiences. The Arboretum supports instruction and research at the University of Hawaii through many different programs. Classes on diverse subjects, from orchid propagation to water conservation, are continually offered for members of the community. School tours are given special attention. On a daily basis, visitors may take a self-guided tour of the Arboretum or choose to take an audio tour. Daily guided tours and group tours are available by reservation. The words of Dr. Harold Lyon, written in 1956, still ring true. Here, then, is a golden opportunity to build in Upper Manoa Valley, a vast botanical garden of native and introduced plants, and at the same time, carry through a project in water conservation that would prove of immense value to Honolulu. Throughout its history and to the present day, the Lion Arboretum continues its mission to bring beauty, knowledge, and an appreciation of and respect for nature to its many audiences. <laughs>